Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Brittany, and today I wanted to do a fountain pen inked, or what's currently inked in my fountain pens. I have like a lot of fountain pens inked right now. I have some in here. I also have some in here, and some in my Franklin Christoph. But I've already talked about those in my last Currently Inked. And these two cases are going to be um, more new pens that have been inked up or ones that you haven't seen minus two. So I just brought those out because I wanted to use them as comparisons. Before we get started, this is the MD cover which is a goat leather and it um, I tanned it when I first got it and I did an unboxing of this and I thought I would just share with you how it looks so far. It's super, super soft, really soft leather. I realized that my, it's my B6 Slim insert from Nanami Cafe does not fit in here, which is really frustrating. <laughs> Um, so the only thing that I found that fits in this MD cover is an MD notebook. So they are made for MD products. And um, I use this to just document my fountain pen inked, like the ones when I ink outside in my videos. And then by the time I do my videos, I have this ready for me in the event that I may have forgotten what I inked up in between in between each video. So I thought I'd just share that. But if you guys have any suggestions on Tomoe River products that would fit in an MD B6 Slim insert, this one, then let me know because I love my Tomoe River paper um, and I would love to have a Tomoe River notebook in this cover. Okay, so moving on, I thought I'd share a little bit about the cases. I did do a video solely on this case because it's just gorgeous. Um, I love Superior Labor products and this is this one is no different. You could see it's getting some character. I have no idea what that is um, or some of these. I think they're scratches, but... Um, Right now I have some chunky pens in here, so you can see it's it's warped just slightly. And um, I have a couple of pens back here, so you can kind of see that, how that looks. But just sharing how it's looking after, um, I think it's been almost two months now. It's definitely getting darker and painting. And to show, show you that comparison, you could see this is the Bamku Hen um, Truly Yours adjustments I got to my traveler's notebook or modifications. And this was an undyed leather. And if you look at some of my, my older videos of this product, these leathers are almost becoming the same now. Um, a few weeks ago, they were different. And that's just because I'm handling this more. This one doesn't really see much light. So it's funny how it seems like this one is catching up to the color of this, this leather. And this is how like the inside leather looked. It has a little bit of patina on the edges, but yeah, it's pretty interesting how they're just, they're growing and growing with me. Okay, and then also I have my Shibui uh, case, and this one is growing on me too. It's still a little bit stiff, but not as stiff as when I got it. And one of the things I did do is that for the past couple of, or like few days, I would open it up and I would kind of like roll it a little bit in the opposite direction just to get a little bit softer. And... Um, I do like how the pool tab is this thick metal here. And um, the only thing is that it's kind of oddly 
shaped and I think that also depends on the pens you put in here so yeah and I do have some pretty chunky pens in here as well so let's get started let's find my page And I got my clips. I have my stamp and it is not July 4th. We are in the 20... Echo, what's the date today? It's Sunday, July 24th. 24th. There we go. And let's do my green Shashihata ink. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to open both of these up because I would like to go into a certain order. So I don't have as many pens in here, just four. And this one has three. So I'm going to start off with the pens that we all have seen before, but um, I will explain. So this pen, which is the Pilot Prera, and it's in the fine. I love this pen. And when I purchase one again, I realize how much I've missed this pen. It's just so easy and it's so comfortable and it's very light. I wish I knew where my pen sleeve, my like, my little glove is. It's not nearby me, but that's okay. So again, this pen is, it's, if you don't have one of these in your collection, and let's say you are a collector, you need one of these. These are just like, a staple, I think. And I'm not trying to go overboard and buy all the colors or anything, but definitely something to have in your collection. So I, if I want a fine line and something easy, I usually reach for this pen. And because it's a steel nib, it's just no matter like the pressure, sometimes when I write, I have pressure and I don't want my line width to change because I'm just writing hard, right? So. That's another reason why I reach for this one. It's a still nib, so even if I press a little bit harder sometimes and then lighter, my line widths are, it stays the same and it's um, it's not going to change and um, have variation, which sometimes bothers me. So Pilot Prera and this ink is new to me. This is the Pilot Aero Shizuku. Ku. Jaku. And I have this in a fine. So you could still see shading with this ink, even with a fine nib. And then, so satisfying. 
Okay, next pen is my Pilot, is my, uh, pr uh, pff, sorry, it's my Aurora Kaleidoscopio. And this one has grown on me. I'm just, I don't normally like to post this one just because when I post it, this part of the cap rests on this part of my hand. And sometimes it's irritating because depending on what I'm writing on and how I'm writing, it kind of goes back and forth and it rubs right here. And this little um, change in, in the height of the barrel to the cap is, um, I could feel it, I don't know. It just, it doesn't always feel good. So nothing has changed with this one. I still have that same ink, but I'm showing this to you because of the next pen and the ink in there. So I don't have many purple inks. Um, I'm only just now, every so often, picking up a purple ink, and um, I wanted to share this ink with you and the next ink with you and how it looks. It's the... Aurora Kaleidoscopio Optima and the body color is the loose blue. Okay, so the um, ink is the Monte Grappa. Night bus purple. And it's a pretty dark ink. One of the inks that I would put in a fine nib if I want like a really dark line and I want to be able to read what I'm writing. So I still have the same ink in there. I haven't used it all just because I've been a little busy with some of the other pens I've recently acquired. So let's talk about that. First one is this one. And I haven't talked about it much because I, well, one, I just got it. And also um, I felt like maybe I'll just wait until I do my currently inked. So this one is a Kilk fountain pen and it does post. It feels a little wonky when it posts, but if you push it in, push it in, it will post just fine. It feels a little back heavy to me. So I'm just gonna set it there. It has a really pretty sterling silver um, design on the cap and on the barrel. I've decided to ink it up with one of my other purples and these colors are just slightly different in their base colors. So when these two colors are right next to each other, you can see that this one is a little bit brighter than uh, the Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa Night Best Purple. So this pen is from the brand Kilk and it is the Noon Celestial. It's 
so comfortable, this barrel. I think because the grip section is quite big, um, the threads don't get in the way. The threads don't get in the way and it's just, it's a pretty smooth transition. The step up is not too terrible and I, and the grip here is a little bit girthier than my Aurora and my Pilot Prera. So the ink I'm using is the Colorverse. Hayabusa. And this is one of the shimmering inks. But it's so, it's pretty subtle to me. Um, you probably can't even see it now. And this nib is in a fine. So in my last video, you may have read that I was having trouble with my fountain pens. Uh, my new fountain pens and this was one of the pens that gave me some trouble but I figured it out. The tines were too tight and what I did was put in those little cleaning um, plastic, I guess plastic shims um, that came with the Pilot Prera to clean or that it came with the Pilot Parallels and I just sat them, I took off the nib and I just put them in the tine and kept it there for literally a couple hours. And it widened or it just like allowed a little bit more space and it's hard to see, but it writes so much more better. Um, it's juicier and you know, for a fine nib, you could see it's a little bit thicker of uh, the ink coming out than the Aurora. Okay, so we briefly talked about this one. And this is another Kelk. This is the first Kelk I got. And after I got this one, I jumped on I jumped on Endless Pens and got the other one, the Celestial. Now this one did not give me any issues. Just, it wrote like a dream out of the box and for an extra fine to do that I was just struck so it's pretty wet too and this is Kilk and this one is camera Laterna. And the ink is Diamine. It's this pretty Diamine special edition um, with Colt pens. And it's called Little Bob. I'm not quite sure where that name came from, but it is like a red with green sheen. And it might be hard to pick up, but after we're done with this, I will show you what these colors look like in the light or in better lighting and what you can see now. Oh, and this one is an extra fine. Okay, so a couple more is 
my narwhal pen. So we've also talked about this guy. This one is also a smooth writer. I do find that with the Kilt pens, they have a little bit of a feedback, so it's easier to control. This one is a little bit harder to control because it's so smooth. So this is the narwhal nautilus, but I wrote it nautilus first. And they call it the Grand Rhapsody. So the ink I'm using is this beautiful, like olive green, and it turns to a brown green as it dries. So it's the Sailor Manio Chirakashi. Such a great shader. This pen also has some weight. It doesn't post. And um, it's just really cool to see those portholes. I think it's called portholes. So this brings me to my other narwhal. Let me show you since these pins are quite large. Um, so they're roughly the same height. This one is heavier than this one, but um, they're still heavier than all the other three pens I've talked about so far. Huh. So sorry if my lighting is changing. I guess the sun is behind a couple of clouds. This one does post, but it's just awkward and too long for me. So I only brought this one out because it has been sitting in my drawer, my pen drawers, for a couple months. And I broke it out recently and it just started writing like as if no days have passed since the last time I wrote with it. But also, the funny thing is I also have a green ink in this pen. So this is Narwhal. Sometimes it skips. I'm not quite sure why. This is the Narwhal Gaiden Leather Collaboration Demonstrator with the rose gold accents. And the ink is Tasia. Oh, why did I say Tasia? It's Tasi with an E. Seasons. Hailstorm. And this green is 
Oh, it has some beautiful shading. You can see the lighter colors come through with the dark colors. But I wanted to share the differences between those two and how I have inked them up with both a green ink, which wasn't planned. Okay, so last but not least is this one. So this is my first Monte Grappa fountain pen. And I just love the body. How it's just one sleek design with the silver cap um, end here so that you know where the barrel and the cap meet. And I love how it's just seamless, right? So it's a twist to post. You can post it. It doesn't feel too over weighted, but it is a little strange because it's really long. Now, I can post it and write with it, although it's pretty long and that tends to bother me, but um, I can do that even though there's a large step down between the cap and the barrel. This um, doesn't touch or rub on my hand, so it's actually quite comfortable outside of the fact that it's just a little weird because it's so long. So I was having issues with this nib um, first and before I had issues with the kilk. Well, I had issues with the kilk because that one came in first, but I didn't think the issue was that bad. Um, however, with this pen, it was terrible. So that's when I started looking on what to do about it. And I found a great video on YouTube on how to fix the tines and to widen them. So I did it with this one and it just, man, it just, it really improved the writing experience. So this is the Monte Grappa Elmo. one and I because I couldn't get this to work right and write right I uh, ended up putting Aurora black and I heard that if you can't get a pen if you really want to know if a pen is um, not writing well because of something going on with the nib try Aurora black first because Aurora Black can really help a pen, I guess, just the way it's formulated, that it should work in every pen. And if it doesn't work, then yes, um, the nib needs to be fixed. So I did that and um, now it's just writing seamlessly. And this is in the extra fine. As we all know, um, if your pen isn't writing in extra fine, there's something going on. Um, but, um, yeah, so it's, it's working fine. I love the scroll work on the nib. Really pretty. And it's just like a simple black pen. Cigar shaped. I love how the middle part of the barrel is thicker than the ends. And... Yeah, so that's all I have for you today. I'm going to show you what this these colors look like in better lighting. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. If you want to see more, please don't forget to subscribe. And I hope that I will see you all in the next video. Bye.